now being recorded. <laughs> so be aware of that. Um, we're going to ask that during the main presentation, um, people um, remain muted. And maybe if you have something to say, you could pop it in chat. Um, but for the most part, stay muted during the presentation. And then if you do go off mute and afterward, while we're still recording, be mindful of your background noise. It's kind of hard these days, we know, but you know, if you've got like the tea kettle boiling and that kind of stuff, just mute yourself. And then um, we love virtual backgrounds, but try not to use any with animations um, because they can, um, they can um, affect our, our, our attendees that have um, vision induced motion sickness. And we do have a couple of those folks that frequent SF Doug. Um, be nice, be respectful. Um, we abide, we want everyone to abide by our code of conduct. Um, and um, basically it says we seek to provide a friendly, safe environment for our folks that all participants should um, be able to learn and engage and have productive dialogue. And this means in the chat during the presentation, um, in the Zoom chat, um, anywhere we might, where we might interact with each other. And we adhere by the bad camp code of conduct, which reflects the Drupal Code of Conduct. And today we're going to be uh, Mauricio and he will explain the Migrate API um, and many of its concepts um, like source process and destination plugins from a site builder perspective. Um, we'll go over some subfields, some constraints, some um, processes, and um, he'll be able to explain that a lot more eloquently than I. Um, and then Irina is going to, Irina and James are going to talk a little bit about the feeds migrate module and um, talk about a lot of the good work that they've been doing, including getting it ready for Drupal 9. And I bet she'll probably tell us what we can do to get involved and help that project move along. And in the Drupal news, I don't have too much um, except Drupal 9 was released. So Dries wrote an article on it. Aquia wrote a nice article on it. So go figure out um, what you can do, what the roadmap is, that kind of thing. That's the most exciting news we've had in the last two weeks. And Drupal events, um, Drupal Camp Asheville is July 10th through 12th. It's the week before DrupalCon. And I, many of you know that I'm really into teaching people about Drupal contributions. And Drupal Camp Asheville, we're gonna have an online um, first time contributor workshop. And I'm gonna go over all different kinds of things. It's sort of a revamped session that I usually do at DrupalCon. But I'm also gonna go into depth about what kind of contributions you can do that aren't code-based and talk about where you can go to find out how to do more things than just code. And I'll talk about code too, but that's pretty exciting because it's the week before Drupal, DrupalCon, which is July 14th through 17th. And it's gonna be three days of mini summits, two hour summits, presentations, um, and then I'm not sure what they're doing with trainings. I think they kind of dropped that, but are still letting folks participate and use DrupalCon to sort of uh, guide people to their trainings. I'm not quite sure. In Drupal Camp Colorado went virtual. They're going to be August 14th through 16th. Drupal Camp Atlanta is September 10th through 12th, and they are still accepting papers if you all want to submit a paper to Drupal Camp Atlanta. Bad Camp, everyone's favorite Drupal Camp, is virtual October 14th through 17th. Um, we did list the trainings that we've um, confirmed on our website. Um, Mauricio is going to be doing a, a Drupal 8 or Drupal uh, a, a Drupal migration training there. Um, so that's exciting. So this is, might be even a little bit of a of a preview of what's what's to come at Bad Camp. Drupal Camp New York City, they are still thinking that it's going to be an in-person conference and it's going to be either October 30th and 31st or November 13th through 14th in Times Square. And then Drupal Camp Florida announced they're going to be in person February 19th through 21st. So Drupal jobs. Um, at the end, we can talk about who's hiring and who's looking. Um, Drupal.org um, or jobs drupal.org is a good place for both posting your resume and posting jobs. Um, uh, I talked about this last week, but it holds true that the community working group had a really good article for resources for what you can do while you're looking for work, what you can do in your downtime. 
and that's drupal.org slash community CWG blog loss of work resources. And what's the lineup for the summer? You know, we're all virtual, so um, anyone can join. Pretty exciting. Um, in two weeks, Jeff St. Pierre from Lando um, Tandem, a local shop that we all know and love. Um, he'll be talking about how to use Lando with Drupal contributions, which is different than project work. Um, he's going to quickly spin up a contribution environment um, so we can test or make patches, and then we can tear it down and start um, all over on a new issue. So that's pretty exciting. It kind of automates the process on how to do Drupal contributions. And that same day, Gabe Levine from Matchstick is going to talk about um, the difference between various business entity forms and the pluses and minuses of each, including um, touching on tax considerations and administrative burdens. So he's going to be talking about LLC corporations or sole proprietorship partnerships. That's a mouthful. And that, Doug, is 3.30 to 5.30. We've been alternating. The first Doug of the month is the, the later version, just so everyone knows we've sort of alternate those times. So we, since we're virtual, sort of accounting for people on the East Coast or, you know, some more global people can get involved. Um, our very own Alyssa is going to be talking about the voting API um, July 9th. It's a deep dive technical talk covering a case study for a client who needed to launch a web contest with online voting. Maybe that'll be a hybrid where we do half online and maybe meet at UCSF or something. That might be exciting. And then Danny Englander from Canopy is going to do getting started with um, Layout Builder for Drupal 8. He's going to cover the basics of Layout Builder, which is kind of nice. Andre was on a couple of times in the last year talking about Layout Builder, but a little bit more advanced and what modules uh, went with it. But Danny's going to cover how to um, kind of run the basics of setting up a content type for Layout Builder and um, cover how to override and how configuration works with it all. And I'm always looking for speakers. Um, so if you want to talk at Doug, um, reach out to me. We're talking about maybe even once we go back to in real life, doing virtual presentations here and there. That way we can have presenters from all over and not limit ourselves to space. And then Bad Camp is coming up, and we always could use volunteers and help organize. So if you want to make Bad Camp more radical, there's lots of opportunities to do that. And then um, I'm going to use this space because I'm an organizer for a couple different camps. Um, if you're on the East Coast, New York City camp is looking for organizers and volunteers, um, all different types of people for that. And then also Florida Drupal Camp is looking for organizers and volunteers. Um, and just to round out my section of slides, I want to thank Canopy Studios um, for organizing and reaching out to speakers and volunteers and providing the Zoom room um, for tonight. So without further ado, I'll let Mauricio talk about Drupal migrations. Hello, everyone. Good night. Can you hear me well? Let me share my screen. Can you see the slide deck? Yep. Okay. Well, uh, thank you everyone for being here and to the San Francisco Drupal User Group for the opportunity. This is Drupal 9 migration by example. Um, the slides and the code that I'm going to show is already available. So if you go to that URL, which I'm going to share after the meeting, you can get everything that I'm going to showcase today. My name is Mauricio Dinarte. I go by Dinarcon on Twitter and Drupal.org. That is my email and my link to my Drupal.org profile. I am from Nicaragua. Uh, it is 82 degrees at the moment, and it's about the same temperature all year round. So if you ever need to escape cold winters, although in California it's not that bad, you can come here, beautiful nature. If you feel adventurous, you can go to a lot of volcanoes, some of which are active. If you want to do it online, you can go to that website and it's a tour on like going from the top of a, of a volcano to where the lava is flowing. And you can actually do it in person if you want to. 
Um, I work with a company called Agari, which is based in Boston, but we work remotely and I am based in Nicaragua. And um, just like a, a, a shameless plug, plug um, Amy June mentioned that the Drupal trainings were canceled, uh, but some companies um, are going to organize those trainings them, their, themselves. And Agari, we were supposed to present two trainings to Drupalcon about migrations, one uh, like this one, basic concept of migration, and another one on Drupal upgrades from seven to nine. Uh, so that's going to happen next month. So if you are interested in, in professional training, you can check the website for that. I am also very passionate about teaching, and I started this project called Understand Drupal to be able to share what I have learned over the years and not being an English speaker myself, like a native speaker, I have experienced a language barrier and one of our goals uh, is to be able to provide content in multiple languages. So at the moment we are mostly writing in English, but we also have Spanish and French translations. And we're also exploring with different formats at that time, mostly text, but there are some videos coming as well. So in that, uh, in that website, you can have a look at a series I, go to, I wrote last year about migrations called 31 Days of Migrations. And that's basically a guide, like if you have never heard about migrations at all, and you only have some basic Drupal site building con uh, knowledge, uh, you know, you go through the series, it's 31 days, 31 articles, and you will be able to learn a lot. Uh, and I also produce in a video course about the same topic, so feel free to have a look. What we're going to talk today, um, um, to uh, many examples about migrating notes, files, paragraph, uh, taxonomy, uh, dates, images, files, addresses, migrating from different sources like uh, CSV and JSON, doing it from the UI and from the terminal. So I'm going to spend some time like starting from scratch, but after the fact to save some time, um, I'm just going to explain the examples that are already available. We're not going to talk about uh, multilingual or multi-value field migrations, upgrading from previous version of Drupal. Uh, that's a separate talk that I might be presenting in about a month. So uh, you can you know, follow me on Twitter for news about that. Uh, and we won't be talking about writing custom migration plugins. And this is only because there is no time to cover all of this, but at the end, I will try to leave some room for questions. And if someone wants to ask anything about this, I am happy to, to answer as well. Uh, and as I said before, you can follow along. That's the link to the slide deck. And another one to a feedback form is five questions anonymous. So I would love to have your feedback, not only about the content, but also uh, about the way that I present it. So I always, try to improve and if you get a chance I would have really appreciate it and all the code that I'm going to show today is public it's already available and you can you know show like uh, read it study it and you know in addition to what I'm going to explain today so let's let's start um, before going into the examples I want to give a um, a basic idea of what the migration API is in Drupal. If you have ever worked with uh, an ETL system, um, this is what the migrate API is. If you don't know what ETL, that doesn't matter. Uh, you can be pretty proficient in the migrate API without knowing this, but I, I have been giving trainings for many years. And in many cases, people come to these trainings being expert in other fields, not necessarily in Drupal, and they know much more about databases, much more about, you know, this other type of system. So I'm just mentioning this in case you are familiar. Um, and that's basically what the Migrate API is. It's an implementation of an ETL uh, system in Drupal. To give a, a, a summary of what ETL means, um, it's a way to move data from one uh, location to another, from one system to another, and it's a three-step process. The first step uh, is extracting, and I like to give real-life like examples to e exemplify, you know, what what these terms mean. So, imagine that we want to make bread, so we need some raw materials like yeast, flour, salt, and so on. So in the ETL process, the 
extract part refers to getting those raw materials. And in the case of Drupal, getting that raw data. Are you importing from a CSV file and you are importing from a JSON file and you are importing from WordPress or maybe Drupal 6 or 7 into 8 or 9? So depending on your source of your data, you will have a source plugin that's going to give you that functionality. Once you collect, you know, your source material, your raw materials, you, you know, transport them one way or another to what you, you want to do in the end. In the case of, you know, making bread, uh, you add salt, sugar, you bake it, you, you do a lot of things. So this transformation of the raw data, of the raw materials, um, is done in Drupal via process plugins. So you will be able to mix, mix and match and transform your data from however it was stored in the original system into the expected format from Drupal. Um, and we're going to talk about that uh, through the examples. And once all the transformations are, are completed, then the last step in the ITL process called load uh, means uh, storing the end result of those transformations in, into some shelves. For example, if you're making bread, you might do different type of bread, and each of those is going into its own shelf. So in the case of Drupal, this uh, can be notes, user, uh, paragraph, taxonomy terms, media entities, and so on. So um, these are like the different uh, shelf that you can put your, you know, your content into. And for those, you have destination plugins, one for nodes, one for users, and so on. And these three parts is mostly uh, what the Pygrid API does. Uh, that being said, um, when when I was tasked with writing my first migrations a couple of years ago, I thought it would be easy because back in, in the day, I had already about five years of experience with Drupal, being a developer and a site builder. And, you know, it's just like one more task. It ended up not being the case because I stumbled upon a lot of concepts and a lot of new terminology that I didn't understand at all. And it was pretty frustrating in the end. I only wanted to move some content into Drupal. So, uh, well, you know, the, my estimate of a couple of hours turned into a couple of days, if not weeks. But in the end, this is what made it click uh, or how I started to understand uh, how the Migrate API works. Remember what I mentioned before, the source, the process, and the destination plugins? So all these buzzwords that I didn't understand at the beginning will fall into one of these categories. And the, the thing is that when you are writing a migration, um, each migration is going to have one source, one destination, and as many process plugins as you need. So for example, you can be reading from a CSV file into nodes to create nodes. And then you have as many transformations as needed. You might be reading from an XML file to create users and so on. Uh, one thing to clarify here is that it is true that every migration only has one source and one destination, but a migration project is a collection of many migrations. So for example, imagine that you want to operate from Drupal 7 to Drupal 9, uh, you will have a migration for the article content, uh, you will have a migration for the um, uh, basic page content type, for the users, for the roles, and so on. So um, in the end, in, the, in, the, in this case, uh, you will have the same source, which is a Drupal database, but you will have many, many migrations with different destinations. And that's how you, you, you can mix and match in the same project. Um, however, you want to use uh, you know, your source and your destination. But every file is only going to be one source plugin, one destination plugin, and as many process plugins as needed. And this will be more evident um, when I go through the examples. And just like uh, as a oversimplification of, of how this works, imagine that you have a CSV file uh, or an Excel file with three columns, first name, last name, and department. And in the end, you want to create notes in Drupal, but you want to combine the first name and the last name into a name field, just like put them together. So uh, you need to find a way to match, uh, to convert or transform the format in the source, which is the two columns, into the expected format in the destination, which is one column. So in my process pipeline, um, I'm going to have you know something that glue those columns together and I store them in that new in that new column name in my destination. So again, this is 
we're going to see how, how all this works. And with that, uh, I'm going to move to the demo. And of course, this is a live demo and nothing can go wrong, so bear with me. Um, just like before jumping into the demo and explaining how it works, I want to reference the series of 31 articles about migrations. So again, if you want to migrate users, nodes, dates, addresses, paragraph, CSVs, JSON, XML, Google Sheets, Microsoft files, Excel files, uh, if you need to debug migrations, like this is basically what I wrote to my past self to be able to understand uh, migration. This is the guy I wish I had had when I started. So I, I, I wrote it and made it available for, for everyone to use uh, at understandrupal.com. And this is the repository. Um, and the repository contain, contains instructions. It has been tested with Drupal 9 and the latest versions of everything. Uh, it gives you, you know, how you set up everything. And in addition to, you know, the basic readme, you have a troubleshooting and a development um, uh, guidelines as well. So you can get set up, you know, by, by yourself. Um, the first example that we're going to see is migrating from CSV files. And a general recommendation, one of the most important things that you need to understand in any migration project is that you need to be very aware of how your source is structured and what is the format that it uses. For example, and this is going to become more evident later, that you know, in the case of dates, we have the fully spelled month, then the day, then a comma, and then the year with four digits instead of two. Uh, those things play a role in how you're going to be migrating this, uh, this information down the road. So always um, understand your source, that's, that's very important. And when you get the module and the project set up, this is what you get. Uh, I am using Olivero, which is the new uh, theme for, for Drupal 8, uh, excuse me, for Drupal 9. And you're going to get a, a, a view uh, with uh, a staff page. And it, it actually gives you instruction on how you can execute the migrations. So just for quick reference, I'm going to show what we're going to build in the end. I'm going to switch to the terminal. And by executing this command, I will be reading from the CSV file and JSON files. And if I refresh the page, uh, I, I can see, you know, we have images, we have, you know, regular fields, uh, rich text fields, links, dates, addresses, uh, taxonomy terms, paragraph, so everything is already there. And when you have content imported, it also gives you instruction how you can roll back, which is a, an operation to delete what you imported before. So by running that, um, if I refresh, everything is gone and I, I get to that starting point. So again, all of this is already available feel free to play with it after the fact. And if you have questions, you have my email there and I will be happy to help. Um, now I'm going to switch to the IDE to start writing the migrations ourselves. Um, another recommendation when writing migrations in general is that there, there are many ways in which migrations can, can go wrong. And ideally you find an example that does something similar to what you need and you start modifying and tweaking that example. So that's what, what I'm going to do today. Um, this is the project where I have everything working. Hopefully <laughs> nothing will break. Uh, and what I'm going to do for the sake of this example is just like going to copy uh, into a new file, the, the, the one that it's already working. And I'm going to remove almost everything uh, that is just like to, to have a very, very basic migration. And I'm going to explain, you know, what is it that you need and so on. Um, okay, so from what we had before, um, this would be, the very, uh, very basic um, migration file. One, one thing to note is that um, 
all the migrations have the three parts that I mentioned before, a source, a process, and a destination section. They are also required to have an ID, and this ID needs to be unique across the whole system. Um, uh, because I already have one that was named UD staff CSV node, I appended it into this one so it doesn't clash with the one that I had before. So that needs to be unique. And you can optionally have a label. The label is going to appear in some uh, commands that you're going to execute, uh, but it's not required, but it's, it's, it's good to have. So, okay, uh, uh, something else to notice that migrations are written in YAML, and YAML is very sensitive to white spaces. So for example, if you were, not, if you were to not leave a space after a column, the, it is not that the migration is going to fail, it is that the YAML file is invalid and it will break. You might think that the migration is not working, but what happens is that the, the, the YAML file is not properly formatted. It's like having a syntax error in PHP, if you are familiar with that. So you need to be very, very careful with your, uh, with your formatting of the YAML files, especially when you copy and paste code from, from the internet or from other examples, because the IDE might change the formatting for you without noticing. And again, you can just break the migration because of that. Um, so, uh, because I created a new migration file, uh, for reference, I have a, a, a custom module called UD staff, and I have a folder called migrations. That's where the migrations will go uh, by, by default. So in this case, because I added a new one for the, for the system to detect the new file, I need to clear the cache or reveal the cache in, in Drupal 8. So I'm going to go to the command line and do a cache reveal operation. And with this, the new migration will be detected. I'm going to be using Drush because it is faster than going through the UI, uh, but most of these things can be done uh, through the UI as well. And another thing is that I have this migrate status command where I can see all the migrations that are in my system. Uh, this is the one that I just created. So uh, I, I can see, I can verify that it is already detected. You can see that I am passing extra parameters to the migrate status command. This is just because the, the screen, I have the, the, the font very big, and if I wanted to do that, it will print more, more columns and it will make it harder to read. So just, it's not necessary to do it, but just for, for making it easier to, to present. Now, um, I can see that my migration is being detected. And if I go to the website and refresh, uh, nothing happens. The, the table doesn't appear with data. And this is uh, something else that we need to consider. Uh, run, executing a migration or doing a migration is a two-step process. First, you need to write a file, and then you need to run it or execute it. Uh, so for that, the way that you execute the commands is by, again, in this case, using Drush. You can do a migrate, oops, sorry, migrate import command, and then you pass the, the ID of the, of the migration that you define. And in this case, we can see that it reported to be successful. I'm going to check the website, and indeed, it is already doing something. Uh, we're going to take a step back and explain what we are doing so far. But in general, I like to you know, show the end result first, and then explain what's going on. So we know that something that we did is already working. So let's have a look exactly what we're doing. In the source, we are saying that we want to import from CSV file. That was uh, the, the thing that we wanted to do. So as I said before, there will be different plugins for this. And in this case, uh, I, there is a plugin called CSV. This is provided by a column, uh, by a module in the country space called migrate source CSV. Uh, uh, in the slide deck, there is a reference to a blog post where I list many modules uh, related to migrations and their purposes. So anytime that you want to migrate from CSV file, you add this extra module and you get that functionality. Uh, each source plugin, be it CSV, JSON, Drupal uh, 6 or 7 database, WordPress and so on, each of them are going to have their own configuration. In this case, the uh, CSV plugin expects at least two things. 
one is the path to the file itself. And I can see that this is a relative path uh, from my Drupal installation route. So this is basically a file in, in the same module. So um, this uh, UD stuff CSP file. Again, to make it easier to understand, we can use the GitHub uh, user interface. And this is the content of that file. Um, now, uh, the other thing that the module expects is a, an ID key. And that ID is going to be an array of elements. Uh, those elements are columns is my CSV file. So in this case, I have a, a column called a staff ID that's going to represent uh, each row uh, in, my, in my CSV file. So this column is like my unique identifier. It is possible to have more. Like for example, if I didn't have this column, I could use a combination of first name and last name uh, to make a, a to uniquely identify each record. But in this case, because I have this, uh, it, it suffices. Another thing to notice that um, the migrate API and in general, when writing jumbo files, sometimes there are alternative um, syntaxes for doing the same thing. So for example, the, the we, I, I said that you need to specify an array. So you can do it like this, like uh, having an indentation, like uh, one level in, indented and have a, a minus sign and a space and then your elements. And if I were to have something else, it will be here. So um, uh, this is another way to define arrays. You can do it like this or you can put it in square brackets in the same line separated by commas. And just like uh, as a reference of many ways of doing the same thing. So that is my source. That's all that I need. Uh, the CSV source plugin actually provides other configuration options, but that's the bare minimum. And again, if you were to use a different plugin, uh, that has to a different configuration. Something else that you need to keep in mind, uh, the Migrate API is always evolving. I have been presenting on, on these topics for at least four years now, and there is always something new. Um, for example, I, about a year ago, there was a new version of this module that provides CSV import functionality. And in that new version, the name of the configuration keys, some of they changed. So if you up update your module to the to a newer version without at, at the same time uh, changing the the migrations to reflect those key configuration key uh, modifications, your migration will stop working. So be mindful when you upgrade a module that there are no breaking changes uh, that might affect your project. Uh, in addition to my source. I have you know, my destinations, what I want to do. In this case, there is a plugin called Entity Column Node, and this is the one responsible for creating nodes. So I am creating nodes of uh, a specific type. And that type, uh, it's called UD stuff. The same way that you can create articles or basic pages. In this case, uh, I am creating nodes of type UD stuff. Um, the way that you specify the type of a node is you, you say default bundle and then the machine name. And that's a pretty common pattern. Most of the time when the Migrate API asks you for something, it is the machine name of it. So you need to be aware of that. Um, and there are different ways to, to, to find the machine name of, of, of a piece of content. And then I already have a way to collect my data and I already know that I want to store uh, nodes of type stuff. So in my process section, I'm going to do my field mappings on the left. Uh, you will have the properties and fields of your destination, in this case of my content type. So I am setting the title um, uh, property to whatever is in the first name column in my CSV file. One caveat here is that the, the names are case sensitive. So that's why I say you need to be very mindful of how your source is configured because the columns uh, use like capital letters for after a space, I need to do the same here. If I were to put a, a lowercase n, it will not work. And by doing this, um, I already have you know a migration working. But let's say that I, uh, as I said before, I want to combine the first name and the last name into, into the title. So how do I do that? Um, that is where process plugins come into place. And I'm just going to do what I normally do when working with migration. I go to my search engine of choice 
and I say Drupal migrate list of process logins. Um, you know, the first results look very promising. I'm going to click there. And I want to put together two things. So let's see what I, what I can find. There is a list of core migrate process plugins that looks reasonable. And in that list, uh, I can inspect one by one. And the third one uh, says that concatenates a set of extremes in computer parlance. Concatenates means putting things together. So apparently, I can use this process plugin uh, to put my first name and last name together in the type field. So I'm going to click there. And conveniently enough, um, it says, you know, this is what you want to do. And it gives you like an example of the configuration. So you have your process section, you have your field that you want to combine, and then how you use it, how you use the plugin. So I'm going to copy this, go to my IDE, and be very careful with the pasting. As, as I said before, um, indentation matters, the spaces matter. So as you can see, when I pasted things, um, it, it's kind of uh, weird. Source and plugin should be at the same level. So I put them you know, at the same level and both of them need to be children of title. So um, I, I'm just like doing the right formatting. And then I, I, I say what I want to concatenate, in this case, First name and last name. For the sake of the example and to save some time, um, I'm going to let, give you a clue of what's going to happen if I were to um, execute this again. Normally, if I, if I run the migration again, like the import operation, it says that nothing has changed. If you change your mod, if you modify your migration definition file, what you usually need to do is roll back the migration, and that will delete everything. And then you need to import again. Uh, but again, just like to save some time. Another thing that you need to do is that you need to clear your cache for the system to pick up the changes. If I were to just migrate, uh, even though the file has been changed, Drupal kept internally a, a cache version of the previous version of that file, and you know the change won't be reflected. If I go to the site now, and I refresh the page, I can see it's not, nothing is there. And because I just cleared the cache, I need to import again and my content should be there now. And the content is there, but I have a problem. Even though I am doing what I intended to do, like put the first name and the last name together, I would like to have a space in between. So I'm going to go back to the same documentation page. And if I were to scroll a little bit down, I would see that there is another example with another configuration key called the limiter. And apparently this is something that I can use you know, to to put that white space in between. So I'm going to do that. Again, I need to be very careful with my indentation and formatting. A white space I can put bet uh, between quotes. And I clear my cache, roll back, and import again. And if I go to the site and I refresh, my, you know, it, if I go to the to the individual node, I can see the space in between. And even though this might be verbose, uh, this is actually like a real life workflow. Um, anytime we're working with migrations, you are going to constantly be changing that file. You will need to come, um, you know, become used to clearing caches, rolling back, importing again, and so on. And one thing that I am not doing uh, again because I want to save some time. But usually, every time that I get something working, I will be using Git or any other source control system, and I will commit a change. And why do I do that? Because if at some point I am migrating 10 different fields and something breaks, it is easier to identify which one is, is, is not working. If you have been uh, committing to source control, everything that worked before. So you can just like go back in time to the one that is failing and fix that. 
instead of trying to guess, you know, which of the 10 fields is not working properly. Another thing, uh, and this depends on, on, you know, how you work, how you develop, but try to read the whole documentation page. Like in this case, that the limiter key, I could have done it since the very beginning, but I just like just copy and paste it, like when you do from Stack Overflow and so on. So be mindful of two things, understanding what you are copying and pasting, and try to read the documentation fully, because many times you will have extra options that you didn't know and actually are very useful. So this is like the very, very first example of, of what we wanted to do. Let's say now that we want to migrate um, the biography, like uh, a, a rich text field. If I go to the to my site, I can go to a structure, content types, and stuff. And I can see that I have a biography field, which is a rich text field, and it's called the machine field UI UD biography. So again, um, it is very important to use machine names here. If I go to my edit page in my in my site, uh, I can see that the biography presents uh, a WCV editor and I can type. But I want to do this automatically from um, the migration, from the CSV file, which I do have a biography column in here. So that's what I'm going to do next. As I said before, um, anything that you want to migrate, you put it as a direct shift of the process section. In this case, I put the, sorry, I put the machine name field UD biography. And then uh, what I want to copy, the biography column. Uh, again, it's a small change, but every change requires clearing caches, rolling back, and importing again. So the files, I'm just like mapping whatever is in that column to this particular field. If I go to the site now, um, to the staff page, I can see that the content was imported, but there is a problem. This was a rich text field where I was supposed to be able to have italics, links, and so on. And why is that not working? Um, if I go to one specific node, uh, I can see again, like it's not being formatted properly. And if I click edit, um, the content is there, uh, but the biography and in general rich text field, you not only put the content that you want to appear, you also need to specify the text format. In this case, for HTML, restricted HTML and full HTML. And the biography is, is an example of a complex field that has uh, subfields or a complex structure. So what's happening is that I migrated the content, but I didn't migrate the text format. So Drupal doesn't know what to do with that. Um, the way that you fix that is that you know, you, you import both things. Um, so if I want to if, uh, import the content, I need to put a slash value. I'm going to explain this uh, syntax in a second. And if you want to import uh, the input format, you, um, I'm just going to copy it for brevity here. Um, you know, indent it properly. So uh, when, when a field has a, a nested structure, like complex structure, what you do is like you put first the name of the, the machine of the field and then a, a, a slash, and then the name of the subfield, in this case value, and in this case format. One thing to note is that we don't have in our CSV file which format we want to use. So we can, what we can do instead is provide a default value. And the way that you provide a default value is using a plugin and rightly name default value. And then you configure it like this, default value, and then whatever you want to, to store. In this case, I am saying uh, import using the basic HTML format. And again, this is the machine name of that particular format. Uh, I'm going to roll back, clear my cache for the change to be detected, and import again. 
And if I go to the website, to the staff page, now my balls, uh, my links, my italics are working because this time when I run the migration, I did specify the input format that allows for this. Um, one of, when I was starting with migrations, I was very confused by this, you know, how do I know what value, uh, what subfields any particular field has? How did you just guess that it is value or did you just guess that it is format? Um, there are many ways to figure this information out, but to save you some time, uh, I wrote an article about this. So um, basically any field that comes with Drupal core, I, I, in this article, I explain what are the surfaces that are available and what you know is the expected data that, that, that you need to put in there in them. So in this case, uh, this was a text formatted field. And as you can see, the values are, the possible surfaces are value and format. And that's exactly what we were doing before. So this is just like a reference for you to know. In the case of addresses, for example, they have 13 subfields for different things. So be mindful, not all of them are required, um, but something to keep in mind. Um, and now let's do, let's talk a little bit more about uh, syntax. So in Drupal, you can have multi-value fields and the way that you specify uh, multi-value mappings in Drupal is again like this is the machine name of the field. So I have a, a link field in my con content type configuration. Um, again, it's important to understand your destination. Again, not only your source. If I click edit here, I can see that I have a, an a, a online profile when I can have you know as many items as I want. And these are link fields that have URLs and link text. So again, what I'm doing here is like first the machine of the field, then a slash, and then a zero base index representing the delta or the multi-value, uh, the first element, the second element, the third element, and so on. And if I want to migrate specific subfields, um, I put a your, uh, you know, the slash and then the subfield. So the, the format in general, if you want to generalize, is uh, machine, oops, sorry machine name delta, which is for multi-value fields, and then subfields. And this is how you can you know, do like, dynamic migration. Uh, in this case, for the URI, I do have in my CSV source, a column called Drupal, a column called GitLab, and a column from Twitter with URLs, and that's what I'm doing here. Uh, but for the title, I don't have anything so I am actually going to introduce a new concept uh, and this is called source constant. So if you want, um, in addition to uh, whatever your source plugin defines, you can also do things, uh, you can uh, have a, a, a constant section and in that constant you can have just like raw text, hard coded text that you want to use later. Uh, this anything that you define in, in, in this constant, you can use in your process uh, down the road. So what I'm doing here is like when I migrate the Drupal uh, URL, the title of that uh, link, I want it to be my constant called Drupal link title. Constant Drupal link title, it would say Drupal.org profile. Uh, for GitLab, you know, the other one. For Twitter, the other one. So constant is a way to have this uh, default hard-coded uh, content that you can use uh, after afterwards. And if I wanted, I can have a constant for defining the input format here, but I just want to show different uh, ways of doing the same thing. So that's why I intentionally did it this way. Uh, again, this is a change. I need to clear my cache. I need to roll back and I need to import again. And by doing so, if I refresh, um, I can see that now my uh, elements have, you know, Drupal.org profile, GitLab profile, and Twitter. And I, if I go to edit one, one of them, 
So uh, just for, for the record, I am using the quick start command that comes with Drupal and that is using the PHP built-in server and sometimes that freezes. So that's what happened here. It just froze for a moment, but now I stop the server and restart it and it starts working again. So if I go here, I can see that the URL is coming from my CSV file and the link text are coming from my source contents, like hard-coded values from my source contents. Um, one thing that I want to show, the, I am on the edit page for a particular node. Without making any other change, if I roll back and I import again, in theory, I am not making any change. But if I go to the site and refresh this page, I get a page not found error. And this is something that might be easy to miss, but every time that you roll back, you are actually instructing Drupal to delete what it was created. So you delete the node, and the next time that you import, you get a new node with a new node ID. So be mindful if you care about node IDs, which for the most part is not a problem, but just be mindful that every time that you roll back and you import again, uh, that happens. So, but if I go to stuff, I can see that, you know, content is there and my, you know, Benjamin Melanson node is going to be there, but with a different node ID. The one last field that I want to uh, show how to map and then uh, we can either open it up for, for questions is the field for address. And this is one of those very important fields that you need to know exactly your source configuration and your destination configuration to be uh, successful in the migration project. So the field itself, it's called UD start date. I'm going to actually go step by step, uh, going to the website, going to the content type configuration and check that this um, you, you field UD start date indeed is a date field. And if I click there, I can see that it is defined as a date only field. You can have date only or date and time. In this case, it's a date only. And if I go to my CSV file, I can see that I have, um, you know, this format. So basically, um, what I what I need to do is go from from this format to some format in Drupal that I might still not know. Um, just, I, I, again, I have written blog posts about this, but if you have a date field um, that only stores that date, this is what you need to store. This is the format that you need. So this is what uh, we're going from this to this. If you store the date and the time, this is the way that you that Drupal expect it to be. And if you, for example, try to store the node creation time, that is uh, stored as a unique timestamp, as an integer, and what you need to create is you know, a number, basically. So it is important in general, but in particular for um, date fields, that you understand is it a unique timestamp, a date, or a date and time field, because that will determine how you, how you proceed. Now, uh, we have a format date plugin to be able to, this, to do this type of transformations. My source represents the column in my CSV file, which is called date. And then we have this from format and this to format, which are kind of cryptic. Uh, unfortunately, this is the way that it works. But if you want to understand what those things are, that's, uh, you just look for PHP date uh, in your search engine. And you will come to the um, documentation for the date function in, in PHP. Um, and you will see that you can have some uh, characters for formatting different elements of the date. And this is where you need to be very, very careful. For example, you can see that you have a lowercase d for the day of the month and a uppercase d again, uh, and a, excuse me, and, and a lowercase j for the day of the month. The difference is that one has leading zeros and the other one does. And if we explore or source, we can see that, for example, for the third and the eighth of this month, we don't have the leading zero. So we need to put a J here. Uh, 
And that's basically what you need to do. You need to have this documentation page open and, and, and your source and do the, do the mapping. So for the fully spelled out month, you have a, capi uh, a capital F. Uh, and, and just like for simplicity, that's what I did. This is the full month, then a space, then the day without the leading zero, then a comma, then a space, and then the year with four digits. If I were to put a lowercase, why is a year with only two digits? And that's not the format that I have. And again, what I need to store or what Drupal is expecting in this field is this format, the year in four digit format, capital Y, a, a, a dash, then the month, dash, and, and the day. So I, this is the way it is. Uh, you need to understand your source, your destination, and these uh, date field uh, characters for the transformation. And if, if I now execute this migration, I need to clear my cache, roll back, and import again. And if I refresh my site, now I should have uh, start dates uh, migrated. And basically this is the same process that you follow over and over uh, when working in any migration. Uh, what you need to know is like what tools you have at your disposal. It is very important to understand the list of plus plugins that are available. As you can see, the bulk of the migration is actually going to be in the process section. Once we uh, define my source, I don't change it very much. Uh, I did add this, but uh, I could have done it in different ways if I wanted, and my destination hasn't changed at all after I set it. So most of the time you're going to spend in the process section, and for that you need to be aware of the process plugins that are available. Again, if I go to that page from Drupal.org, um, You, you can see that there are a lot of process plugins that come with Drupal coding itself. But in addition to that, as it is often the case in Drupal, you also have a lot of uh, contrib modules that provide extra functionality. So there is a module called Migrate Plus that also offers a lot more uh, process plugins. And there are other modules in addition to this that again, you install them and you can get extra source, process or destination plugins. Um, well, with that, uh, I want to leave some time for questions. If someone wants to like see specifically about how to migrate any of the other fields, feel free to ask, but it's basically the same procedure. And uh, you have, as I said before, all the code already available. Uh, there are instructions on how to get your local environment set up in the development uh, file. You basically copy this command one by one and you get exactly what I have running, and then you, you will see on the screen, you know, what, what you have to do to execute the migrations and get the results. So if there are questions about uh, any of the remaining field mappings or in general, I'm happy to, to answer. There were, there were a couple questions in the chat. Um, Farnoosh asked, um, does the ID have to match the file name? Uh, the question is, does the ID needs to, find the, needs to match the file name? No, it doesn't. Uh, okay. It is common to do it, uh, so you, you, know, you keep that relationship, but it, the, the Migrate API doesn't enforce it. The only thing is that it needs to be unique in the whole Drupal installation. And then Marky asks, couldn't you do a Drush MI um, dash dash update migration name? Okay. Um, well, uh, at the, by doing this, with this example, it's not, uh, okay, I, I, I think what I, I understand what he's trying to As say. opposed to rolling back. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you can, you can also do a dash dash update and that will, um, you know, instead of deleting the entity and creating a new one, uh, you can update the existing ones. There are a lot of caveats around this. Uh, as I said before, you need to be very careful uh, with newer version of, you know, Drosh or the models that you use. And from time to time, it doesn't happen often. Like in the first years that I have been doing this, it has happened twice. 
that one of those flags that you pass to migrate import stops working. Maybe some something new came along and then the update flag doesn't work or the limit flag doesn't work. In fact, as of this moment, um, there is a flag to execute dependent migrations that is not working and you need to apply a patch for it to, to work again. So um, if you use these extra flags, be mindful that if something doesn't work, it might be because the, the command itself is broken in, 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 the, in, the, in Drush, for example, or in the module, not necessarily because your migration uh, is not working. And again, you know, this is an open source community, so everyone can jump in to help. Another thing that I want to talk, to mention, and this is mostly about Powerapp migrations, um, I'm going to, for the sake of, you know, going in a little bit deeper, I'm going to execute the whole migration so I can, it, it can be shown or, or seen. So I'm going to execute um, all my CSV migrations in one go. And I am going to refresh my page and I can see that, you know, this column here is a paragraph. So if I were to roll back the migration for the nodes, um, roll back. I can see that everything is gone. And if I import that migration again, I would expect that everything will be there, but you will see that it won't be the case. So if I refresh, oh, huh, interesting. Apparently that has been changed. But just for the sake of the example, when, when you, you roll back a, a, a node migration that has a dependency of paragraph, it used to be the case that when you import again, the paragraph will be missing. And what you had to do before is to roll back both the paragraph migration and the node migration and then import them again. So this should have, have this should have a fail, but it didn't fail, which is a testament that things are always changing. Uh, but yeah, that, that's something that I wanted to demonstrate that sometimes when you actually delete instead of updating, because you are interacting with the whole of Drupal, you might actually be triggering uh, other modules to do some operation when you delete the main one. And in the past, when you delete the node, it will also delete the paragraph references and those will be gone forever. Apparently that is no longer the case. Um, Bernardo asks about layout builder migration, um, specifically custom inline blocks. So uh, as of right now, there is no, uh, there is no plugins for doing that automatically. There is no support in migrate API for uh, layout builder. There are plans to do it and uh, maintainers are you know, committed to getting it done at some point, but as of today, it doesn't work. What is available is a script that if you are using layout builder, uh, no, excuse me, if you are using panels in Drupal 7 with version four, you can upgrade to version five and that has a script that allows you to um, switch to layout builder. And I might be getting my versions wrong there, but there is a script to go from paragraph to layout builder, but that doesn't use the migrate API at all. Uh, as of today, there is no support, but the, the team is planning to do it at some point. Uh, of course, you can do a custom migration, uh, but then you basically need to, you know, take care of that data structure transformation by yourself, by yourself. And one thing particular with Layout Builder is that it might be both code and configuration uh, entities. So if you have a general template uh, for, the layout, for the Layout Builder for a content type, that is stored as a configuration entity. If you have uh, Layout Builder overrides per node, that is stored as content entities. So you, again, you need to understand what Drupal expects under the hood if it is a content on a configuration entity, and you need to take, take care of that manually. But you can do it still, uh, even if there is no, like a straightforward or easy out of the shelf way. 
And Colin asks, for multi-value fields, how do you um, deal with unlimited variable number of deltas? Um, uh, in, 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 in the example that I show, um, I did it this way because I, I wanted to, you know, explain the different syntax. But again, um, they're, they're just, this is not a, a, a correctly formatted um, configuration, but you can, there is a, a plugin called subprocess that allows you to um, basically process an array. So let's say that I have all my elements in, a, in an array, so some array. And then um, I don't remember the name of the key here, but then basically you can have your uh, title and URI. And then from that array, uh, what, you know, call, you know, uh, calling a value, value two, value one, something like this. So that's what I say, you need to be mindful of what process plugins are available. When you have unlimited values, you can use the subprocess plugin to be able to, you know, dynamically import as many elements as you want. Uh, and in general, there are many, many ways to do the same thing. Just like to show an example of this, um, the, the taxonomy terms, if, if the, doing it like this will allow you to import as many taxonomy terms as you want. And in the series of 31 articles about migration, there is even a rare approach uh, to importing taxonomy terms that allows you to import as many as you want. So again, it's like, like Drupal gives you so many tools and you need to be aware of them, uh, what are their usage and their needs. So when you are faced with a challenge like this, you know, you know, I can use this process plugin or that specific, uh, you know, concept of the Migrate API. And then the last question in the chat window is from Irina. Um, she asked if you would talk about chain migrations. Uh, by chain migrations, I assume that she's talking about migration dependencies. Um, yes, migration dependencies and how, um, you know, one of the biggest things about migrate module is that you can have one migration dependent on another and you can also build custom uh, plugins, which will deal with very specific things that are relevant only for your very own project. And this is where is a huge power of migrate. Yes. So uh, in, in this example, we actually have a dependent migrations uh, for uh, in, in, in the case of the node, I depend on the migration of images and the migration of paragraph to be executed in advance. And the way that you can enforce that is that at the end, you know, this is an extra key, like the destination, the source, the process, it's called migration dependencies. And you say uh, in a required subfield, which migrations need to be executed in advance uh, for this migration to, to, to run. If any of this is not executed, it will fail. And I can probably, if I, um, and I already broke my example. Let me see if I can show this quickly. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to, so if I um, clear my cache and if I roll back, um, Actually, I'm going to roll back everything for, for the example to be more evident. And now if I try to import again, only that migration, I will get an error that says, you know, this migration depends on others to run. Mm -hmm. And only until you do that, uh, you can, you can, you can run this one and you can instruct the system to run the execute dependencies flag. And with this, it will, uh, and with this, uh, the same API will read the- Oh, your, this your, is so cool. You, uh, it will read the, you know, this array 
uh, it, it, you need to be explicit though. Uh, it's not magic. You need to be explicit and it will uh, read this array and execute those migrations. One important thing, and this is that, you know, what, what I changed that my API is always evolving. This flag is currently broken and I had to apply a patch for it to work. And that's it, it, that is in the instructions uh, from the demo repository. I, I, I give the instructions on, on how to apply the patch. So if you follow those instructions, you get it. But be mindful that out of the box, that flag is not working as of today. Okay. Hopefully very soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Very impressive. You're welcome. Thank you. And um, before we hand it over to Irina, you had said something about maybe sharing some resources at the end. I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you, everybody. Did you have a slide with resources, Mauricio? Oh, I thought you were talking to Irene. Yeah, oh, yes. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so basically, um, oops. So only one thing failed. Um, a quote from one of the minor maintainers. Um, this is a complex system, so don't get discouraged if things don't work at the beginning. Uh, in this URL, you can find a list of about 40 um, modules related to migrations and what they are used for. So uh, have a look at that. You know, thank you to people who have helped me a lot along the way. And we have reached the end or maybe just the beginning. And basically in those two links, you have the link to the slide deck and in the slide deck, you have the link to the example repository and to the feedback form. So that's basically it. Thank you very much. Great, perfect. Okay, Irina, it's all you. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for, uh, for, first Marissa, thank you for a wonderful presentation. This is like very, very uh, detailed uh, overview of uh, and shows power of migrate module. And it was a great, great news when migrate module was included in Drupal 8. So I'm going to take uh, maybe 10 minutes of everyone's time. And I hope, Marissa, you have time to uh, look at this presentation as well. Because what I'd like to show is how we could possibly make the complicated migrations uh, be the, uh, the only migrations we need to code uh, via your VI or uh, manually. and how we can simplify setting up this whole uh, migration process, uh, giving, um, uh, giving power of, uh, uh, giving, separating power of uh, people who know about what they want to migrate from, uh, and giving more power to developers that know how they can migrate. So this is a very quick add on to your presentation. And you already told, told us everything that it would normally tell about power of migrate. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, feeds the module UI and why it is um, so attractive and how we are working on making feeds UI and migrate engine work together and where we are today. It's been um, several years project by now and I looked through my slides and it was exactly a year since I presented at SF Doug. Um, so this is a live demo, so something will break. Uh, how many people used feeds module? Um, okay, since I can't really <laughs> see any, I, I, I love this. So let, let's say it another way. Can you speak up if you don't know anything about um, features module? Anyone? So features what, or feeds? What? Features or feeds? You said features. Feeds. No, no, sorry. Feeds. Feeds module. So feeds module is um, user friend uh, site build. This is the migration tool built for site builders and for to empower content editors. It allows you to do mapping. It allows you to transform uh, your data while you're importing. 
It allows you to work with various formats and it allows you to set up periodic input. And one of very important things is that the, your editors can define source of migration. And today during presentation, we saw that um, if you're using directly migrate, your source of migration is coded in, in code. And so if you want to change uh, source of your uh, migration, you have to have developer working on it. So this is a very quick demo of how feeds module works. So you, um, you go to feeds, feed type, you can add feed type, you can define source, uh, you can define what parser you want to use, you can define processor, and you can define article. Uh, Mauricio, does it look familiar to what you're doing with the uh, migration coding? Yes, it's a UI for that. Uh, right, so right now there is no well-known UI for that because this UI is a hidden gem and only three people uh, know about it and two of them are here. So James, uh, our, my partner in crime, and Yuri van Koppen who lives in, who is in Europe and so he can join us today. We've been working on this module for a while and I've uh, presented it um, at many, many different events, including our last presentation was in Amsterdam. And we're a building module that will combine uh, great things about uh, Migrate that's already in core and UI features from, from the feeds. This is definitely going to be a win win situation because now developers can concentrate on uh, building uh, things that are really exciting and interesting and don't have to build CSV migrations again and again and again. And then site builders can configure it much quicker and much more efficient. And content managers gain flexibility to import their content without going through, the, 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 through another round of development effort. Uh, this is a quick summary comparing feeds with Migrate, but the uh, core of this presentation is quick demo of uh, working feeds module, which has been built already. Uh, the name of the module is feeds underscore Migrate, and you can download it and test it, and I'm going to so this is how it works. This is recorded demo, but if you install module, you can do it and it works very well. So first you have to create a migration group because this is the only UI uh, that is available uh, to access migrations. But see this new button add migration that doesn't exist right now. This is essentially uh, coding the files that Mauricio showed us today. Does it look familiar, Mauricio? So this is the place where you're defining plugins and parsers and all this stuff. Okay. And then the UI allows you, in addition to familiar um, uh, migrate uh, UI, it allows you now to do the mapping, which currently is available only for feeds. And so you can define the source for a field and say the migration. And what is happening behind the scenes is that this migration in now is being saved with migration source equal to now. After that, we're adding a feed migration that each of which can have its own source. And this is where we're going to add, to upload the file. And this has been already predefined. And now we saved what we call importer, very similar to how it works in feed. And then you click import and your nodes are created. Da 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 da. All right, so now we have this new nodes, so migration and plugins were created using UI. 
So I hope that uh, you will see the power of this, um, of this module and try it. And the biggest uh, progress that I wanted to report today is that we, oops, hold on, sorry about it. Okay, sorry. Um, computers tend to do whatever they want. So um, the, the biggest uh, achievement for today is that um, Yuri Van Koppen uh, coded the plugin UI, which allows you to access all the process, core process plugins that are available. So now, and this is like one of the key elements for, uh, migra for migrations to work. And this is where eventually you will be able to add also your own plugins if you have very custom transformations that you need to add. Uh, there's days because we have, um, we don't have to attend meetings in person. It's great to see so many faces that I normally wouldn't see in the San Francisco Doug because people can't fly just for the, you know, Doug meeting, unfortunately. But it's great to see all the people that um, are coming from other um, time zones and we can share this uh, with them. And I know it's kind of late in the day. Um, so I just wanted to share with you this good news that we keep making progress. I wanted to invite you to try it and definitely will appreciate any help that we can use. And uh, Mauricia, I hope this is, will be of interest also to you and your group. Yes, I actually uh, have seen this before. I think Lucas had introduced it to me. Um, in my research of the Migrate API, I have actually Actually downloaded that code and read it. Like I haven't actually coded it myself, but I use I usually you know get migration related modules and I study how they work, and mm -hmm. it's pretty pretty impressive I must say. It's a lot of work, but what you'll be doing there. Thank you. So we hope that uh, this short presentation will inspire you to come come next Thursday. Join us. Uh, the the time is between six and seven UTC, so people, you know, from pretty much more or less all over the world uh, can join at this time, except the Rose who are sleeping, unfortunately. But we're a very, we would love to, for you guys to try this module and um, to contribute your ideas, to contribute your, um, you know, knowledge of whatever, whatever you know about it. If you have time just to test it, it's also great great uh, thing. We have a wish list and I want to thank you very much people who contributed to this module, you know, from the very early days. Uh, we have a uh, Kanban board for those who prefer visual UI and thank you very much. Thanks, Irina. Thank you. If anyone, you. and uh, James, uh, James Dixon uh, yeah. is do you want to say something about this module and you know how you know things are going? Um, yeah, I mean uh, the process plugins and mapping is tricky. Um, Yuri and the team are, are working through it, but I think once we get through that, it's going to be a lot more useful to people. Right now, it's working for XML. Um, we also need to add uh, compatibility to CSV and, and other sources as well. So um, yeah, try it out, and uh, if you have any spare cycles to, to help out, definitely come our way Thursday. And then there's a presentation that you folks did, did at a few different camps, one Drupal yes. Europe and then mid camp in 2019 yes. and um, I camp can... this year, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. And, those, and are all we... on, those are all on Drupal TV if anyone wants to look those up. So absolutely. I can put link to our Amsterdam presentation into this chat if people want to know more about it. Uh, but this, this, this project is developing very rapidly. And so something that was great um, six months ago now moved, uh, you know, there's an, another thing happening every, every 
week, I would say. So I don't know whether older presentations, so older presentation probably, um, I'm trying to find the, the text. Here it is. Okay, so here is our presentation from Amsterdam that also has some text uh, about um, how to, um, um, how to, um, you know, what's behind it and what's the motivation and how it works and where we're trying to get. And I see that Farnoosh raised the hand, so I don't know if I should answer the question. I, I, I do have a question. So are you generating migration plugins on the fly? Like for example, that XML demo that you show, is it its own thing or you are actually using the XML parsers from Migrate Plus? It is coming from Migrate Plus. That was the, the, the whole big deal about this module that um, we, would, we can reuse now um, core uh, core uh, process plugins and uh, migrate plus and we work with Lucas very closely to make sure that we're tapping uh, directly into uh, migrate plus and a migrate tools as well I believe right James that's right yeah so th the whole idea was that we don't want to build something completely new but because all these parsers and tumpers are already in core and they will always be there and they will be bug free. It is much more beneficial from, from everyone's uh, perspective. Like it's a win-win for everyone. Uh, and that's why we wanted to use it. So we really hope Marissa that your company will have a chance to look at it and you know, even finding bugs is a, is a, is a big deal. So there's still a lot of work to do, but Sometimes, like I can't, lots of, there's lots of coding that I can't do, uh, but I can say what's not, not working. Okay. 